Good morning. You know, it's always a tough act to follow when you follow Ray. And uh, I've heard him speak several times in his in making opening remarks. And uh, if, he, if I had known what he was going to say today, I, I don't think I would need to say a speech today. So apologize if I'm being redundant. But it is uh, truly wonderful to see all of you in attendance at today's Empowerment Conference. And it is indeed an honor for me to be here to welcome you on behalf of the Board of Education. I want to take this opportunity to recognize and thank Roberta, Ray, and the Education Institute of Hawaii for putting this uh, conference together. By the end of today's conference, I'm sure we'll all have a better understanding and hopefully a consensus on what empowerment means. And the Department of Education and the Board of Education will surely benefit from your ideas on how we can leverage the concept of empowerment to improve our public education system. As many of you know, in 2016, the Board of Education and the Department of Education reviewed, amended, and extended the strategic plan beyond 2018 and 2020 with a focus on closing the achievement gap to ensure equity and excellence for each student. The strategic plan also reflects the Board and the DOE's commitment to encouraging innovation, ending the teacher shortage, reducing testing, and increasing student learning, and this strategic plan, along with the opportunities provided by the Every, Su Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA, should help push for greater levels of empowerment. The board appreciates very much the hard work put in by the ESSA task force to draft the new Hawaii Blueprint for Public Education and align it with the new BOE and DOE strategic plan. We at the Board of Education are unanimously in favor of a new vision and a new direction. And because of this, the board felt it was important to embark on a search for a new superintendent. While we sincerely commend Kathy Matayoshi for her work in leading the Department of Education, the board has an obligation and a responsibility to find the most qualified candidate to lead the DOE, to be a change agent willing to create an environment of innovation, effectively execute on our joint strategic plan, and ensure we make positive progress on the goals established in our plan. Embedded in this plan, along with the ESSA blueprint, is the term empowerment, and this is where we need your help. The board is supportive of increasing empowerment in schools, but we need to ensure that it's properly managed. Recently, I met with some members of the DOE leadership to talk about the notion of empowerment, and the question that was posed to me was how we should raise the level of empowerment in schools. And my response was that the board is reliant on the leadership team to exercise good judgment on how empowerment can realistically be delegated. I also stated that in my opinion, there are schools that fully embrace and want to feel empowered. There are schools that want to be empowered but may not know how to use this. And there, there are schools who may not want empowerment at all for a variety of reasons. And as an example, the school leadership may lack the level of experience to take on a high degree of empowerment and thus need more guidance. In other cases, the school leadership may simply prefer to get more guidance rather than to take on the level of empowerment. In any case, we need to be careful in empowering our schools because we need to balance this with the appropriate level of accountability to make this work. So as much as I am in favor of empowerment, my hope is that this conference will also focus on accountability, responsibility, and ownership. This is truly an exciting time for us involved with improving public education as we have the support of a governor with a vision, a passion, and a deep understanding of public education and school reform. With this unprecedented level of enlightenment, we now have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to achieve a shared vision for public education. As the legislature reviews and evaluates the governor's proposed budget, particularly with regard to public education, I urge all of you to make an effort to contact the legislatures in your areas before the January 17th education budget hearings and make them aware of your support for the governor's request for increased funding. If we take advantage of this once in a lifetime opportunity, Hawaii will achieve the goal of having one of the nation's top education systems by one, establishing a culture that encourages educators to be innovative and creative Two, building on our special and unique strengths, beliefs, culture, and history. 
And three, strengthening the concept of Naho Peno Ao, or a sense of belonging, responsibility, excellence, aloha, and total well-being of Hawaii. While time is needed to accomplish the goals set in our plans, we need to have a sense of urgency if we are to make meaningful progress in improving, in improving public education. During last year's education summit, I asked that we keep in mind the question, what can we do that will be most meaningful to our students? And if we continue to keep this in mind today, I guarantee you we will all leave this thought-provoking conference with a great sense of satisfaction and accomplishment. So please attend today's workshops with a sense of purpose, open your minds to new ideas and possibilities, and let's continue to show the nation that Hawaii is the pace setter when it comes to empowerment and accountability. Mahalo.